In this video, I will be showing an example of how to go from a standard three-view orthographic projection drawing into an isometric view. So the first thing I want to review is for a standard three-view orthographic projection, we have a front view, a top view, and a side view. And when we go to create our isometric view, we need to make sure we have those views oriented correctly. So our front view is going to be put into this plane. This is the block, the standard block uh, that we've talked about. Here, the front view is going to go in this section. So we're going to be viewing, the front view would be as if we're viewing it this way. Side view from this way, and the top view this way. So that's what, what we're going to want to do. So we're going to take this front view, put it here, side view there, top view, tie to the top, and we'll create our isometric view. So I'm going to switch this paper around, and we're going to do this example. So here is my example, just a simple block with a hole in it, and there's actually an inclined plane on the top. It is drawn on our standard graph paper. And I have isometric graph paper here on the right, where I'm going to do my view. So remember, the first thing is, is I'm going to take a look at it from this way and create our front view. Our front view is going to be based off of here. Looking at this drawing, we can see this, since this top and this, on the top and on the side view, the front is planar. So this whole front face here is a planar surface. So I'm going to start drawing that from a point. So I'm going to pick this point right down here, down uh, at the bottom left corner, and just put that on my isometric graph paper. Now I can start working my way around here. So I have a vertical line that's going up. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, scale 1 to 1. So I'm going to go 6 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From this point, I'm going to draw horizontally. There is a horizontal line here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units down, or to the right. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units there. Now if I go around here, uh, I can go up. That's 3, and that's vertically up. So I'm going to go right on the isometric graph paper lines right to there. Now I need to draw this slanted line. That slanted line, how do I draw that in there? Because it doesn't line up with a hor my vertical, my vertical lines or my horizontal lines on my isometric graph paper. Well, the way that we do uh, these types of lines is that we need to know this endpoint and we need to know this endpoint. Well, this point right here corresponds to this point right there. And this point on the right side corresponds to this point right here. Well, if I take a look at this, there's a straight line in our orthographic front view. So it's going to be a straight line in our isometric view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a straight edge. Or in this case, I have a simple ruler. And I'm going to draw a straight line between those two points. And there we have that front view. We're still missing this circle. I'll put that in a little bit. We're going to go and get the rest of the object completed. So what do we need to do now? We need to incorporate the side view and the top view in here. So if we take a look at this, we take a look at the object, and we see that it has a depth of 2. Depth of 2. So from this point here, which is directly under the front point, we have a depth of 2. So I'm going to go and draw a depth of 2 units. And down here, I can look at the side view, and I see that it has a depth of 2, which is consistent. And it, on the bottom edge, there's a straight edge here. So I'm going to just draw that over 2 units. But now in the side view, I can see that there's a line here. And that we know from before, we can project over. There's going to be a straight horizontal line at this point. So up 3, there's going to be a horizontal line that's 2 deep. So 1, 2. And then from the side view, I can see that that is coming straight down. So I can draw that. Now that is that right side face. Now again, I'm going to have this slanted line that needs to go back here. And again, I can tell that it is a straight line, because the front view, I don't see any other lines. It's hidden right behind this line. So those two lines are going to be parallel. All I need to know is the endpoints, which is here and here, there and there. Take my straight edge and I'll be able to create this line.
right there. Now we've blocked out our basic shape. So the only thing that we're missing is this circle here. And this circle, we can see that it exists in the top view. We have hidden lines there. We have a center line indicating that this is a, a circular or cylindrical object. Um, a cylindrical object because we only have one center line. Here we have a circular object. We have two center lines. And on the right view, or in the side view, we have a center line. And we have a hidden line here, but we don't see the hidden line here. Remember, this is a solid line because of the order of precedence of our lines. The visible line is always takes higher order or higher precedence than a hidden line. There is a hidden line behind this, but what we're going to see is the visible line. So let's go in and draw this circle. How do we draw these circles? This is another thing that I'd like um, you to, to do uh, with some precision and learn how to do this. This circle in our orthographic projection is a true circle. When we go into our isometric view, it is not going to be a circle, but it's going to be an ellipse. And I'm not very good at drawing ellipse just by freehand, so I need to set some construction up. In the book, they talked about this also. So let's go through and how do we do this? First thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the center of this circle. Well, I'm going to locate it relative to this bottom point. It's two over to the right, two up is the center of that circle. So if I locate this point, this point's right here. I'm going to go two units to the right, two units up, and I'm going to put a dot right there. That's going to be the center of my circle. Now we need to draw our box that encases our circle. So our radius of our circle is one unit, and I can see that it's one unit all the way around here. So I'm going to actually put four dots. I'm going to come up one, the radius, put a dot, right one, radius, there's a dot, down, and to the left. Now those are our four quadrant locations and now I'm going to draw my box. Since it's a front view, our lines are going to go this way. So now I can put my box around there. Now if we were doing this for an actual drawing, we'd want to draw that. I have it in pen just so it shows up a little bit better for you in the video. But we would use a pencil or something light. We could erase those off later. So now we have our bounding box of where our circle is going to fit into. I've got my quadrant uh, points drawn here. And now I'm going to need to draw four arcs. Four arcs are going to go between these quadrant points. So there's going to be one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, the way I like to start is on these two corner angles, these opposite ones that are acute or less than 90 degrees. Those are going to be tight, tight arcs. Now, these arcs are going to be tangent from this, this quadrant point. It's that arc is going to be tangent to this line. And when I finish at this quadrant point, it's going to be tangent to this line. So I'm going to just draw those in. And that is a tight arc right there. That arc is going to be the same down here on the opposite side. So tangent, tangent. I'm just going to draw that in there, just like that. Now I have two more arcs. These ones are going to be on the obtuse, or the greater than 90 degree angles. And again, it's going to be tangent on this quadrant point, tangent down here. I'm just going to draw that in, draw this one in like that, just reinforce my lines. And that is what the ellipse would look like. Now, you could erase this box off at this point. But for these drawings, what you're going to do for your homework, that's OK. You can leave those on there. I'll be able to understand it. I, I want you to be able to go through this process and be able to draw those uh, on there. Now, there's one other question that we have here, is will we see the backside, this backside circle in our view here? Is it going to be able to be seen? Sometimes we might be able to see the back edge of this circle in here. So how do we figure that out? Well, what we're going to do is we have to draw that backside circle. Even though we can't see it here, we need to kind of see where is it and if it's visible through this cut out in the hole. So what we're going to do is, on the back surface, we're going to locate the center of the circle. Well, the center of that circle is two to the right and two up from this corner. But on the back corner, that's that back corner back over there. And so now we kind of have to find that back corner. It's kind of hidden down here. That back corner actually falls right here. Actually, it's, it's coincident with the, the um, center of our circle. And we need to go back. Oh, we can go over to and up to, and we can locate the center right there. 
That's one way to do it. The other way, if that was a little confusing for you, is that the center of this circle is going to be two units. The thickness of this object is two units, so the center is going to be two units to the right, or two units deep. So from this point, we can go two units in depth to find that center. So that may be a little bit easier for you to, to follow also. So at this point, we have this circle. Now remember, we're not going to see this circle at all unless it's visible through this part. So everything that we're going to draw in here shouldn't be in our drawing at all. So we're going to do it very lightly. And if you have a pencil, this would be a good time to just do a rough light outline. But we're going to draw the same ellipse. Radius 1, so we're going to go up 1, over 1, down 1, to the right, uh, to the left one. We could lightly draw in this box. I know it's almost too light to see on the video there. And our ellipse would fall inside of that box. Well, we can see our ellipse inside of that box does not overlap our other ellipse. So we're not going to see any sort of back edge inside of here. So at this point, we can stop, we can erase those lines, and we're good to go. So now we have our final isometric view of uh, isometric view of our standard three-view orthographic projection.